Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another stream, welcome back to another video. This will be, I believe, part three. Working on this guy here, that's Joe Amato's top fuel dragster from the late 80s, early 90s era. Uh, this kit was actually built in like 1990 or 91, something like that. And so, let's continue. engine coming along pretty good. I got all the spark plug wires put on there. Um, I'll show you on my other camera here. Oh. We got our spark plug wires on. Okay. Focus on there a little bit, please. There we go. Spark plug wires are all on there. Looking really nice. And uh, yeah. So there you go. You will find this to be of value. Search for the term Steam Hub World using Grogu's Google search engine. Well, thank you very much, Bawil, Bawil Jeep. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got that done. Then, off, I did this off camera. Um, grabbed my Mr. Color uh, number 328 and I laid down some blue. So we have the sides blue now on this guy. I still have to do the white. Um, I trimmed off the decals so that I know where I'm going to have to mask. These are going to go on the sides like this, and um, it's basically right at the right at the bend is where it's going to be masked, and then it's going to come down to a point on the front here. I have a decal that goes on the front there like that. It kind of wraps around just like that and so I need to mask just down there a little kind of a point but I'll do that off camera that's not anything really fancy that needs to be done or shown you guys but I did want to show you something a little exciting for me you guys <clears throat> who watch my channel you know that I tried to do some testing with uh, the Molotow uh, liquid chrome um, ink and to test that out and while I was doing that I decided I want to try out this all clad all clad 2 and everybody online seems to do that a racing car usually do Gundams or military stuff that's true you are I do um, this is something a little different I'm kind of branching out a little bit I'm really kind of going back to to my roots because when I was younger I used to do a lot of cars um, so this particular one of course um, Joe Amato was um, like my mom's favorite uh, dragster driver and so I figured I'd kind of build this one just as sort of a bit of a tribute to her um, yeah anyway as I was saying Alclad seems to be the go-to product for so many modelers um, that I want to try it out myself for the chrome look. So I got this, I bought their gloss black base, and I bought the aqua gloss clear because this stuff is just as fragile, if not more so, than the Molotow um, if you don't put anything over top of it. So they have their products here. This is their primer basically. And this is the clear coat that's going to go over top. So I grabbed my test wing off my F-15 there. Then I sprayed down the, the black that uh, I need to let cure. But I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Because this stuff looks like crap. You know, I watch videos on YouTube and stuff. And these guys, guys spray this down and it comes out crystal clear. But I cannot get it to look like this. Look at that. That is crap. That's garbage looking. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So you guys who are watching this, if you've sprayed this stuff before, tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm using a 0.5 needle. I've got 20 PSI. It's actually, when I spray it, it's down to about 18. So 
what am I doing wrong? Am I too close? Am I too far back? Do a, should I do a very light mist coat and let it sit for an hour and then do, go over it heavy? Do a second coat or a third? What am I doing wrong? Please tell me. Let me know. Um, let me know in the comments. I, I don't know what's at this point. I'd rather just spray with Tamiya's freaking spray out of the can and do a, a black clear coat, a black clear black to spray that on. I mean, because that's junk. Um, I'm going to have to let that cure for two days now and then I'm going to try and sand it to get it smoothened out because it's just it's garbage. Anyway, back to this guy, back to this guy. Um, we got to continue on. Where's my instructions? I know we had to do, next was going to be a bunch of cross braces. Um, let's have a look at our instructions. I got to clear my garbage over here. My desk is getting too cluttered. Too cluttered, too much stuff. Okay, so last time we got our little levers in there. Let's grab our frame. If you remember, I put the bulkhead in and then the instructions can, made me confused and I ripped it out and then I realized I had it in the right place so I put it back in. <laughs> and uh, So the bulkhead's back um, where it needs to be and so that's where we are. So we need to do some crossbars. We want number 23 is going to go right up at the front here. And then 24 is going to go right about here, midway. And then 25 goes right back here. So where's our sprue with our crossbars? They... I saw them. Oh, I put the instructions on them. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So we are going to start off with number 23 is um, not on here. I got 24. 24, 25, and 26. There's 24, 25. Where's 23? 23 is not on here, so let's find it asking all this off when I was doing this. I don't think it's underneath this. It might be though. The tape sticks to itself pretty good. Nope, it's not under there. I might as well just take this off now. Okay. Are you over here? There's only so many sprues on this, you know. Ah, here you are. 23. I have painted 23 silver by mistake. <laughs> Alright, so. <clears throat> because we want it all matchy-matchy. I need to put it, some primer on it first. Let me get my table set up. sake of continuance, continuity, whatever you say, um, I want to do that. So let's move on. Number 24. Number 24 is this guy. Okay. And then we might as well get 25 off of here. And get him ready. Okay. And 26 will be coming up. All right. So, I forgot to change the camera back. So, let me do that. And, uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, we're going to be doing these guys here. But this guy needs to have some paint put on him. So, we'll just wait a little bit and uh, do that in a minute. For now, 
let's focus on these guys. Have to clean up our sprues. Unfortunately, with this being white plastic under the black paint, and the fact that I painted it while on the sprue, on the tree, we, you know, we're going to have touch-ups to do. But that's alright. It's quite alright. Okay, so first we're going to do this guy. And he's going to go, he goes about midway. There is a little notch, notch here and here for him to drop into. So it's just a matter of which direction he goes. The little notch that's on here is at a, it's at an angle. It's not 90 degrees. So it kind of sits, you know, not 90 like this. It sits like that on an angle. So that's something to keep in mind that the steering rod that goes through here is going from the low point up to a, a higher point right it's not straight it's not like this it's actually angled upwards so that's something to keep in mind that this has to sit not straight up and down it's going to sit at an angle one thing that might be an easy thing to do to make your life a bit easier is to actually put it on the rod like this and put the rod in so that you get that angle that you need that you need it to be so if the rod is in kind of like that now we can take this and get it to hang properly this is a lot more trouble than really what you need to do you don't need to go through all this trouble right I'm just showing you as an option okay you don't but you don't really need to okay so let's put a little bit of glue on it and get it put in its spot You will find, however, if you don't have it at the proper angle, your steering arm will not want to go through. Okay, I mean your, your rod. When you finally get to that point where you're going to start installing it, it's not going to want to go through. So you want to have it at least close. So now that I have it glued, I'm going to shove this rod through it, holding it in place so that when that time comes, it's glued in place and it's already at the angle it needs to be at. So I'm just kind of moving it, bending it a little bit out just so it's not quite straight up and down because that is not where it should be okay there we go so that's that one the next one is not quite as complicated because it goes back here it's only more complicated because you've got three points that it needs to attach at <coughs> okay so where exactly does it go It goes, see what they show you is they show the bulkhead not there in this picture. And it's gonna go into this spot right in front of the bulkhead. And it is going to go 
this direction. So, to do that, I'm going to have to take my steering rod out, see if it'll just fall. No. There we go. Okay. So, three points where it's going to go in. I'm going to try a dry fit first. And that fits fine. It's just like that. It doesn't quite exactly line up with the hole, but we can kind of make it. We put our steering rod in. it in at the right angle we can put this where it needs to be and I want to use a bit of thin on it just because this did come off of its little spot double checking my front one to make sure it's good looks like it. All right, so that's in. So the third one, of course, is our instrument cluster, but that one comes up here on step 14. So pointing off the camera in 14, and it goes on the opposite side of the um, bulkhead, but it goes way back here. So, we'll pull our steering rod out. It is kind of interesting that this doesn't seem to be lining up straight. That's better. So this one goes a bit further back. Okay, it sits way back here. I was contemplating whether or not to um, add any wiring for the instrument cages. But at the same time that I decided that I was thinking about that, I also thought, I'm never going to see it. And the wiring that could the wires that are going to come off of the, the gauges are so uh, minuscule, they are not worth it, they're not worth the trouble. Okay, so I got that lined up on there, let that sit for a second. Now let's deal with our very, very front one. Now that it's painted black, we can get it off the sprue. Okay. <clears throat> Clean up our nub. And it goes at the very, very front here. Of course, I'll just put it on. 
it goes right here get it at the right angle There we go. It's obviously it's and thin. There we go. And our front brace is on. All right. So let's see what's next. Fuel tanks in already. Fuel lines in. Our levers are in. And now our cross braces are in. So we go back to here and we have our our bar, our gauge, they call it the gauge bar. And now they actually want the steering shaft put in. So we already kind of have it half assembled here. So I'm gonna rotate this to make sure it doesn't catch. as we slide it through the glue being fairly fresh there we go it is quite easy to catch and then bend a piece out of alignment now that we're actually going through one two three holes and this is where it would be easier to have not painted it beforehand. And I am finding it a bit tight against this one. This one's wanting to constantly move on me. seem to have got it in a bind right now. Yeah, this one keeps on moving. I might just take this gauge bar off because keeps on binding and it just came out of its spot here I've got it almost to where it needs to be but it keeps on yeah now it's completely pulled off so Let's just do that. Get this thing down where it needs to be. too far. Alright, we're connected into the steering. So, we're exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to glue there. And I'm actually going to glue it to these bars. stays put. Now this guy, I'm going to have to ream out this hole a little bit because it's just doesn't want to go on there. I don't like doing this. I've had to do this in the past with these kits. It's 
parts and it's never the same one that you gives gives you the problems either okay so now with this in hopefully we'll get this back onto the shaft yeah with it reamed out it now it slides on there easy it's just a matter of putting it in its spot again and we're going to glue it again all right and I'll actually glue it onto the shaft all right there we go So, steering rod is in, now we want the steering wheel. The steering wheel, of course, is a chrome piece, and they are kind of chrome plated, usually on the real car, excuse me. One of the few things that actually is chrome. There's a few, there are few chrome parts on an actual real dragster. Um, because of the cost of chrome plating and stuff like that, it's, it's a luxury item. As far as dragsters go with those things, cars are already way expensive enough. They don't need to bother with chrome plating. I got a little bit of flash on the tip where this thing connects. So I need to clean that off. I didn't notice that before. Now that it's preventing the steering wheel from going on. go. Let's try and get it straight as we can. Because the wheels will be straight. Just gonna hold it with my finger like that. steering wheel is in place. Next, we have our seat support, which is always a, a funny one to install on these. This kind of little funky looking bar. This guy here. If you've never built this kit, this thing is a bit of a, a weird thing to get in there. Got a little bit of flashing to clean up on here. You know, Ravel kits being what they are, the fitment isn't always that precise. And it's kind of funny how this goes in. So, this is going to go in in a special little way where this first bar kind of goes up inside here. This bottom bar kind of goes across on the outside. And then this top piece just goes in at the very top. And that's kind of how it is. It sits in in a funny little way. Getting it in there is always a bit of a chore. And 
and it's been so many years I forget the trick. Years ago I built quite a few of these these kits. So like this I think. I almost have it. I got that in now. So now this has to come up, which means that that's gonna come down. This comes up to here. It is a bit of a tight fit. Let me see here. There are two little notches on the fuel rail here and here where this bar is supposed to sit in. But if I do that, this bar will not line up. If I take that out of its position and fit this back where it belongs, that's not sitting right. Oh. There's enough play that it's going to sit, it's going to work. That will work bar is sitting in the place it's supposed to, so I'm going to glue it. Our bar at the bottom here, our cross member here, is sitting where it's supposed to, so I'll glue that in. But, as you can tell, our top bar is nowhere near where it needs to be. So that's the kind of thing where I'm going to have to glue and hold it, or um, alternatively I could use CA glue to get that to hold permanently in there. It's even the notch on this does not match the notch on the bar itself, it, but it's such a minor detail you're never going to notice. So. I think CA glue is going to be in order. I just need a tiny little bit. Let's see if I can get away with this. I think I'm almost, my tip is almost plugged. Very close anyway. Of course, the trick is putting it on there and not gluing my hand. Alright, it's like the last thing I want to do is glue my hand to it. So, let's just hold it for a minute. And see what's next while I'm holding it. So we got that bottom bar in. I believe next is going to be the seat. Yes, I have my seat here. I have already painted the belts. Okay. The belt's done and the belt buckles. All that fun stuff. Those are done. 
I did use the Molotow chrome on the buckles and give that nice little shine to them to make them look like chrome buckles. So, let's see if my crossbar is going to hold when I let go. It's holding. Yay. Okay. The seat. She's going to drop in. There's no, no points of any specific contact. You just kind of drop it in, it looks like. The one thing you do want to have is have the rail flush with the seat. You do want to have that. So, as you drop it in, you can kind of see where it's going to make contact with different points and different things. such as the crossbar at the bottom maybe touching the fuel rails on the sides so we're going to use our extra thin around different spots right hand which is dangerous because I'm not right handed As much as it might look like it's making a lot of contact at the back there, it's not really. It's only a couple little spots, maybe like in the corner, under here, and here. So there we go, we have our seat. Once the seat is in, we have our back shield another chrome piece this guy right here let's get him off of the sprue pre-painted the detail on this. And as you can tell by this side, right in here and in here are contact points on that back bar. So what I've done before is scratch away chrome in there and in this little spot because it facing this direction just goes like this. And just sits like that. And those really are the only two contact points.
it's not the best fit. It doesn't really fit very well at all. In fact, the top isn't even connecting. It's connecting a little bit further down. So, draw a line like this and like this just so I know that's where I need to scrape set this down so I don't want it to fall off. It's a little delicate. Okay. So with that on, the next piece is the roll cage that goes over top. Let me check something here. The time is not necessarily on my side today. Yeah, I'm okay. I got 20 minutes or so. Okay, so let's get our wool cage. Here's our wool cage. Doink. Wool cage. Bars where it connects there, you know, the molding is sketchy at best. There's, it's never been something that I've ever considered wanting to fill or anything like that. It's at the end of the day, these things are welded by people. They're not welded in a factory or anything like that. The main thing is that they're going to mate up with the bottom properly. But even still, like it seems like Ravel's molding, this is kind of rounded and it's not flat. So when we go to put this on here, it just kind of sits on there. We have a couple of notches. There's a notch here and a notch here. There's two little slits at the back here. But they're not exact, they're nowhere near anything I would call precise. And we have some flashing right in that little groove. Like, if you really wanted to get it to be flush and perfect fit, you got a lot of work ahead of you. And it's a lot of minor detail work that I have zero interest in doing. So what I'll do is get it kind of in position mostly. So it won't move on me. And I'll kind of do a bar at a time. Two back bars are good, so the fit on the back is good. And surprisingly enough, these ones are good too. Of course, I moved the thing with a brush, so that's not good. You're not supposed to move it when you're trying to place it.
Okay. That's looking good. So my two front bars. This side's fine. This side's fine. Once I touch up the paint on this one, this side will be fine. It's this one. This guy is not where he's supposed to be. So I'm going to let that set and worry about that other bar a little bit later. Moving on. Moving on, we're on the final bottom row. We're going to put our rims in our tires. So I've already taken the tires off of their particular sprue. Okay, so here's our front wheels. I dealt with the extremely huge seam line um, across this. And, you know, it makes it look a little scuffed up, like it's actually been running on the road, and that's pretty good. Um, we have our super tiny little front rims. one and there's two okay while we're doing this and the since we're talking about wheels let's deal with the rears because the rears are their own little beast and I'll show you what I do with them Since I have to wait for that cage to dry anyway, let's deal with the wheels. Now these guys are pretty simple, they just simple literally just go whoop, in there done look at that but they're kind of a tight fit that's nothing really special nothing to worry about I'll use some CA or some thin in there just to help it a little bit I'm not quite convinced that this glue really does anything because it's it melts the plastic, right? But it doesn't... I'm not sure if it does anything with the vinyl on these. So we have our slicks, our big honking tires in the back. We have a really nasty looking seam. Separator line. It's a mold line that they do when they make these. And it is horrible, especially where it connects to the that sprue. This is ugly as F. Like, that is just awful. How are you supposed to deal with that? Well, I'll show you what I do. Something I've done before. I'm going to do it now. Take a piece of sandpaper. So let's find a piece of sandpaper. You don't want anything crazy. You don't want, like, 40 grit or anything stupid. Um, I've got some sandpaper here on my little shelf. Let's take... This feels like maybe 180 grit, something like that. Maybe 120. This is definitely smoother. We don't want that. Okay. I'm going to take this is about 120 grit, something like that. And I'm going to take this and do this. And we're going to go around the entire tire and do that. We want to go in the direction that it would go. And what that's going to do, we're going to smooth that out and get that so that you're not going to be able to tell that there was two sides of that mold. You don't want to do it too much. You don't want to flat spot it. So I'm rotating it as I go. This is a trick I, year, I learned freaking 20 years ago for the slicks um, to get that side because this is a flat surface and yet the tire is not as you can tell that is 
really a lot of work going to have to be done. And what I used to do, even just get, you get tired of doing this so much, just do this and get that other side sanded a little bit. And uh, so to get rid of that line. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of awful sanding on there. Let's clean this off a little bit. You can still see I got a lot of work to do, but that's how I do it. And eventually you wind up with a slick that looks like it's actually had been used to do burnouts. And of course, like I said, you don't want to go crazy with with your sandpaper. You don't want to do something stupid like 40 grit. Anything under 100 I think would be too aggressive and you'd get sanding marks in the vinyl and you don't want to go that route. You can see I'm just sanding a lot of material off of this tire just to get it level. And that's par for the course, especially for these old Ravel tires. And so it takes a while, it takes a lot of work. The end result looks much better. And yes, it would be, it's unfortunate that you even have to do this. And a lot of material coming off of them. But that's the way it is. And the worse the tire, the worse shape the tire is, the more you got to do this. But it gives it a more authentic look. I mean, let's face it, used slicks are not super shiny. If you ever go to the racetrack and you see the tires that are actually on the cars that are not new, they're not super shiny. Again, it's just a matter of putting in the elbow grease to get a good looking tire. Still, it takes a lot of work. Now, what's another alternative? Since, does it really matter that the tire is flat? Could I just use this by finger and just sand the tire down manually? Because I've got a pretty big divot here that's never going to come smooth. It's never going to get sand. Well, it's, sorry, it already is smooth. It's never going to get actually any sanding in there. Because it's actually caved in a little bit right here. So, if we just go in with our finger and rough it up, we get the illusion of it being worn as one. Unfortunately, sometimes that's what you gotta do. Now this big honking blemish where it was on the sprue, I can kind of make it disappear mostly and I'm gonna probably glue the tire in place with that spot facing down. See that came out looking pretty good. Right there, that little spot, that looks good. That might be my top of the tire. <laughs> it is looking good. It's it's coming along. We're almost there. Just a little bit of extra. If I had a, you know, sometimes a sanding stick might be helpful. Um, I don't have a sanding stick that's this grit, though. This is just going to have to be a little bit of extra pressure.
I can honestly say that in all the years of me doing this, this is probably the worst tire I've ever had to deal with. I've never had to get do this much work on a dragster tire. Let me get out a sanding stick, even though it's more aggressive. Let's see if I can get into that crack with it. Because it's a little more aggressive. It's a bit... Might allow me to get into that crack and get that shiny part away. Especially considering my hands getting tired now from all of this. It just goes to show you sometimes. really have to put in the work. I think I'm at a spot now where I'm happy. Let's give her a bit of a wipe off and see. And that looks pretty good. We're now at a spot where that looks like a slick it's got a couple little shiny spots I can still work out, but not bad. I could sit that like this, and you look at the car, that's going to look pretty good. Um, so the only thing left to do, I'm going to have... There is an insert I didn't show you guys. There's a sidewall insert on one side here that goes in. I'm going to have that facing the inside of the car, and have the nice, solid piece facing out. So taking the chrome off of this that's going to go on this side like that and then we take our inner side chrome's already removed it goes in and falls on the floor it goes in like that and that's how they sit okay so I can glue this now because the tires only got a little bit a little bit more work to do There we go. And they're tight enough fit, I'm not even going to bother gluing it to the actual tire. The fit is good enough on them. So there you go. So that's what I do with my tires. Okay. Like I said, it's just a matter of putting in that elbow grease to actually get that looking half decent. Right? Sometimes that's what it takes. So, still letting this dry a little bit. I'm going to put my front wheels on. I think these are just going to snap in place. Yeah, they just snap in. That's all they do. Snap, there we go. Now it spins. Front wheel's on. Just like that. You can really tell the, the angle. These are not evenly spaced across. See that? I mentioned that in the first video. Or maybe it was the second one. <laughs> I mentioned that in the, in the video where I was putting the axle in that uh, they're not, it's not straight across, they're angled. This, this side, passenger side, is more forward than the driver. And I don't know if that's something to do, they do that for staging on the, at the lights, or, or why they do that. 
I'm going to have to hold this one in place for a moment while the glue sets up on it. So it wants to sit further forward than the rest. Or then it's further forward than what it's supposed to. I don't know why. But I'm just going to hold that for a minute. So that's pretty much it for the first the first part of the car okay we still have the rear part to assemble but that's going to be next time um, as we're getting closer to the actual assembly of this thing um, it's starting to look like a car at least we got one half of the car done anyway and uh, it's looking pretty good so if you haven't already hit that like button and it would be awesome if 80% of you that watch my videos would actually go and hit that subscribe um, 496 subscribers right now I'm four away from 500 can four of you hit that subscribe button just do it just do it like come on and then while you're at it check out the description box below and go to my Instagram and check out pictures of the things I've built in the past. And head over to my Twitch channel and follow me on there and watch me do this stuff live. Wouldn't that be cool? Watch somebody do this live. Yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and thanks for coming out. You guys who support me are really awesome. Thank you so much. It's really appreciated. It really is. Thank you so much. And yes I'm gonna let this dry and next time we'll start start assembly of the back half of the car and uh, well until we get that started we'll see you on the next one